let's talk about exponential functions. All right, these are functions where x is in the exponent. All right, like for instance, you know, 3 to the power x, this is an exponential function, or 0.9 to the power x, that's an exponential function. Or, you know, it doesn't have to just be x up there, it could be something like 2 to the power x squared minus 3x plus 4, all right? The x is inside of the exponent, that's what I mean when I say exponential function. So this does not include things like, you know, x squared or other things. This is a polynomial here, right? That's, the x is downstairs and there's a constant inside of the exponent. When it comes to calculus, for instance, specifically taking the derivative, these things, we have certain rules to take the derivative where you move the exponent down and all that. These things though, it's a completely different story. These are very different kinds of functions and we have different kinds of rules about taking the derivative. So let's talk about the derivative of um, exponential functions. The basic exponential function, when I want to just talk about a generic sort of exponential function, I'm usually going to write it like this, f of x equal a to the x, where this a is a number, right, and the, the exponent is the variable in this kind of a function. This is an exponential function. This number down here, for kind of a technical reasons, the a we're going to assume is always greater than zero. Um, Letting a equal zero is not, you don't get anything if you put zero in the in the base of the you just get zero if the a is zero. Um, we also you get there's some weird stuff goes on if you let the a be a negative number and we don't want to talk about that. Turns out you can get some imaginary numbers. I'm not into that. So um, we're gonna pick this. You know when I want to talk about exponential functions in general, we have the the a which is called the base, and then the uh, the exponent there is the exponent, all right? Um, and uh, you've probably seen this before when, when you talked about, when you learned about exponential functions in high school or whatever. The graph of such a function looks something like this. This is the graph of y equals a to the x, all right? Um, all exponential functions go through this y value one. That's because, why does it go through one? It's because you plug in x equals zero, that's how you get this point. It would be a to the zero which is one, that's because anything to the zero power is one, all right? So all different exponential functions, they look like this. Um, the a, depending on the a, this thing is either like steeper or, or less steep. If the a is, um, is bigger, it'll be steeper. So a larger a would look like that. It would actually be lesser down here and then greater over here. Whereas a smaller a would be something like that. Okay, but all the exponential functions, they basically look like this. Now let's talk about the derivative of an exponential function. The derivative of an exponential function. All right, I'm actually not going to go through the detailed derivation because it's actually quite complicated, but um, what I want to do is, remember that old, that old thing we used to do about uh, I give you the picture of a function, you draw me the picture of the derivative. We can still do that, even if you don't know anything about what the, the rules about derivatives of exponential functions or whatever. You can still do that general process. Cast your memory back a couple weeks ago when we were doing this. Um, remember, the idea is you look at this picture, which is the original function, and you want to draw yourself a graph of the slopes. Now, typically, when I, uh, I'm going to start that by looking up here and find all the places where the slope is zero. That would be uh, kind of a bumpity bump, you know. If it was like that, there would be these, these points are where the slope is zero. Okay, but actually, you don't see anything like that here, right? Um, you might say that the, uh, the graph kind of asymptotically approaches a point, which, which kind of looks like that, but it doesn't actually get there completely flat, right? It's just approaching true flatness, okay? Um, all right, so there is no zero point. So down here, whatever the, the derivative function I'm going to draw down here, it never crosses the zero, although it gets close to zero when you go off this way. So actually, when you go off this way, it gets close to zero. So this picture, whatever it is, it has sort of an asymptote over there, a horizontal asymptote towards zero, all right? Uh, actually, I haven't, I haven't really ruled this out. It, that means it either does that or it does that. Right? We don't know, actually, is it going to be positive or negative throughout? Well, let's, let's decide, right? What, um, how do you decide? Is it going to be up here or down here? Well, I have to ask myself, is the slope of this graph positive or negative? 
Sloping positive means it goes up as you go to the right. Sloping negative means it goes down. Which one is it? This one, right? The slope is positive throughout. So when I draw the graph here, it should be positive everywhere. In particular, it means on this asymptote, it looks like that from up here, not from down there, because that would be negative. And I'm not trying to hear that. See, it's positive, all right? What happens as you go out this way? Well, it never goes back down to zero because we already said there are no points like this. Those are derivative points. You gotta just ask yourself about the slope here. As you move to the right, does the slope continue to get even steeper or does it get sort of less steep as you go over? And the answer is it continues to get steeper. The slope just continues to increase as you go across. So down here, the slope just continues to increase. This is supposed to be a graph of the slope, so it's gonna look like that, all right? Okay, so if this is an exponential function, then this is the derivative of that function. And now you should be asking yourself, does this look like anything? Does that, that curve right there, does that, is that a shape that you recognize? What kind of a function is this? And uh, you don't have to be a pattern recognition master to decide. These kind of look like the same shapes, don't they? I'm going to say it. This looks like another exponential function, doesn't it? Uh, yes, it does. It turns out this is not a coincidence. I'm not just trying to uh, cook the books on you here. Um, it turns out actually the derivative of an exponential function is actually yet another exponential function. If you start with an exponential function, take the derivative, you're going to get another exponential function. I'll just tell you the formula now. The derivative of a to the x is, like I just said, it's going to be another exponential function. In fact, it is an exponential function with the same base. That is, the answer here is, again, an exponential function where the base is still a the same number. It's not exactly this, though. There's actually one little bit here, and it's that. So this is the formula for the derivative of an exponential function. The derivative of a to the x is a to the x times the natural log of a, all right? And what is this part? I hope you don't worry about it. This should not give you too many, uh, you know, palpitations, right? This is just a number that you plug into your calculator. So like if the a, remember this, when you're doing this in reality, this a will be a specific number. I'm I'd be talking about something like two to the x. Actually, let's just do that example. So what is the derivative of two to the x? The answer is, a2, plugging in the formula here with a equals 2, right? 2 to the x times ln of 2. And what is this? That's just some number. You put this in your calculator, you get some, some number, right? So that's what the derivative is. It's 2 to the x times whatever that number is. I don't actually care what that number is, typically, unless I'm doing a, you know, a real-world uh, problem about, about my bloods. Um, this, uh, if you're doing this, you know, on homework or whatever, I expect you to just leave it like that. If you want, you can put it in your calculator, but that's not necessary. All right. Uh, how about, you know, it doesn't matter what that number down here is, right? You use the same formula, 10 to the x. You get 10 to the x times the natural log of 10, right? Um, there is actually a special one uh, of these exponential functions. If you learned about exponential functions, I'm sure you learned about uh, there's a number called e, right? e is sort of a fancy number, e to the x. What happens if I do the derivative of e to the x? There's something special about this number, e. It is just the number, two point something or other. It's in your calculator also. Um, you know, it has digits that don't repeat, just like pi, although for, for some reason nobody memorizes the digits of e. But uh, you could if you want to. Anyway, uh, let's plug it into the formula here. What do you get? You get e to the x. e is just a number, right? And then times ln of e. Anyone know anything about ln of e? What is, uh, if you know something about logarithms and the natural logarithm and e or whatever, this is one fact that you should know. ln of e actually equals 1. In a certain sense, this is the whole point of the number e. It is the number for which the natural log of e equals 1. Anyway, uh, what that means is that part is equal to 1, actually, so the answer is e to the x. So when your friends to ask you, um, what's so great about that number e? The principal fact that's pretty awesome about e, as far as calculus is concerned, is that the derivative of e to the x is actually just e to the x, all right? It doesn't have an extra little thing. 
usually the derivative of something to the x has an extra little thing on it, right? But not e to the x. The derivative of e to the x is straight up equal to e to the x. So you should actually put this in a box somewhere. This is going to be useful. This is like the greatest derivative formula you've ever had the pleasure to see, just because it's so simple. The derivative of e to the x equals e to the x, all right? Turns out, if you go on to learn um, much, much fancier mathematics, actually, you can prove that e to the x is basically the only function which has this property. There are no other functions which are just equal to their own derivative, except for, uh, so the actual fact is, um, the only function which is equal to its own derivative is some constant times e to the x. If you had like 2e to the x, the derivative is also 2e to the x. But um, apart from multiplying by constants, e to the x is the only function which has this property. Pretty awesome, right? Okay, uh, definitely memorize these things. This is the basic ways in which you take the derivatives of any kind of uh, exponential functions. Now, typically, I, I wouldn't ask you to just do one of these. These examples here were, were sort of too easy. Typically, this is part of a more complicated problem, so let's just do a couple. All right, I got three quick examples. How about this? Uh, each of these examples, your job is to take the derivative. So how about this one? x times e to the x. Take the derivative. All right, you got to ask yourself, what are the rules which I'm going to use here? Um, obviously, you're going to at some point use the fact that derivative of e to the x is e to the x. But there's a little more to it. There's this x times e to the x. So overall, what you have to use here is the product rule. That's because this is two things multiplied together. First being the x, second being the e to the x. So you do the product rule. That is the first thing times the derivative of the second part. What is the derivative of e to the x? The answer is e to the x. Plus now the second thing times the derivative of the first thing. The derivative of x is 1. So that's the answer. All right, the product rule. Um, just because we know some new rules doesn't mean you should forget the old ones, right? One is silver and the other is gold. Uh, all right, let's try something else. Okay, how about this? Derivative of 8 times 2 to the x. This one looks a little weird. Actually, it's, um, it's quite a bit simpler than the first one, actually. Um, what is the derivative of 8 times 2 to the x? The weird thing is just this multiplication by 8, all right? And should you do, um, it looks a little weird because of the x. Here, the x is only on the 2. Remember your order of operations? Um, you do the exponent first here, so you would do 2 to the x, and then whatever that is, you multiply that whole thing by 8. So the 8 is not playing a role in this exponent. Um, anyway, how do you do this? Well, again, it's a product, although this one it's even simpler than before because it's actually a constant multiplied by something. And if you recall, when it's just a constant multiplied by something, you can just sort of move the constant through the derivative, right? That was one of the properties of the derivative we talked about. Um, in other words, you could just say the 8 is just going to stay in the answer as is, and then you take the derivative of 2 to the x, whatever that is. What is the derivative of 2 to the x? Well, we, I think we did this exactly just a moment ago. It's that. So this is the answer here. Uh, right now, this 8 is a constant, and this ln of 2 is a constant. If you like, you can combine them into, into the front. You know, you can write this as 8 times ln of 2 times 2 to the x. And if you really want, you could plug that into calculator. That's a number. 2 to the x, you, you can't do anything with that. That's, that's part of the function that has to stay. OK, one more. All right, how do you like this? Derivative of 10 to the power 3x squared plus 7. The weird thing about this one, as you'll see, uh, is it's got all this nonsense upstairs, right? All the ones we've been doing so far have had only just x upstairs. This one has a more complicated thing, all right? So, but don't, uh, don't freak out about this. Um, what are we going to do? You know, your choices for more complicated functions would be things like the product rule, the quotient rule, the chain rule. It's not a product because this is not multiplication happening here. This is exponents, all right? This is this stuff plugged inside the exponent. It's certainly not a quotient rule because there's no quotients involved here. That, that is, you know, there's no dividing happening. Chain rule, it is actually chain rule. Remember the chain rule is what you use when you have one function stuck inside of another function and that's exactly what we have here. The inside function is that polynomial and it's stuck inside of the exponential function with the 10. So, Remember how you do your chain rule. You do the derivative of the outer part first with the same inside, the outer part being the exponential function with the 10. So when we do the derivative of the exponential function with the 10, you get the same thing again. It'll be this 
times ln of 10, right? That's the derivative of a to the x, right? Where the um, 10 is the a. It's a to the x times ln of 10. And then, that's the first part of the chain rule, the derivative of the outer function. And then you multiply by the derivative of the inner function. I can fit it over here. What is the derivative of the inside? The inside being this polynomial, the derivative is 6x. So that's your derivative.